The chart to the right are the classes that IPv4 addresses are arranged in. The original intention was to carve out chunks of addresses and assign them to organizations that could effectively use them. Class A networks, for instance, were assigned to large enterprises like AT&T, since they had a significant potential to utilize them effectively over time. If the number of network-capable devices stayed relatively low, then this approach would have worked for longer than it did. But we soon realized that we were running out of addresses, and multiple changes were made to manage the growth of devices desiring an IP address. One of those changes was the creation of classless interdomain routing, or CIDR for short, which directly aligned to the goal of increasing flexibility in how IPv4 addresses were allocated. A new concept that was created by CIDR was the subnet mask. The subnet mask effectively removed the classes in grouping IP addresses, since the subnet mask would allow for classless grouping of addresses to be created. For example, we'll look at a class C address, specifically, a 192.168.1.1 address. In a classable structure, the first three octets, or 192.168.1, would be the network portion of the address, while the last octet, or .1, would be the host portion of the address. In a classless structure, the same network and host bits can be maintained if a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 is assigned, or slash 24 for the shorthand representation of the subnet mask. Any other subnet mask, such as slash 16, slash 21, slash 30, or anything else would change the portion of the IP address that is assigned to the network versus the host. For example, slash 16 would split it down the middle with the first two octets as network and the last two as host, with a range of 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255, while a slash 30 would limit the range to 192.168.1.0 to 192.168.1.3.